Today we're talking about how to abide in Christ. I have here a picture of a grapevine from California. The reason I have this picture is because we're going to be reading a passage from John chapter 15 from verse 1 to 8. And in that passage, Jesus uses the analogy of a vine to describe our relationship with him. Jesus says he is the vine and we are the branches. I've labeled the vine and the branches in this picture. And also, Jesus talks about bearing fruit. And I show here how this vine is bearing great fruit. And Jesus really explains how we need to remain in him and he in us so that we can bear fruit like this one. Here I have another illustration. And it says, Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. It shows how we remain in Jesus. The branches just stay, re, stay attached to or remain on the main stem. And the main stem is responsible for absorbing water and nutrients from the ground and producing sap and sending it to the branches. The branches only have to remain on the main stem or the vine to be productive and fruitful. Let's read. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I in them, will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. I've colored several things in here, orange, to highlight them. At the beginning of the, the, this passage, Jesus says, he is the true grapevine. Picture the grapevine that I showed in the image that we had. And let me go back to that image for a second so you can take a look again. So Jesus is the vine here. This is a grapevine. Jesus is the vine. And the father is the gardener. The father prunes any branch that is producing fruit so that it can be more fruitful and it cuts off any branch that does not produce fruit. In here you see many places. In verse 4 you see, remain in me and I will remain in you. We also see that again at the end of verse 4, remain in me. And in verse 5 we, we see you, where Jesus actually declares, yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. And then at the end of, of verse 5 we also see remain in me. And then we go again and see in verse 6, remain in me. And in verse 7, which is the key of this portion of our discussion. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. This verse is the key to a powerful prayer life. If you abide in Jesus and his words abide in you, then whatever you ask for, will be granted. I'm using the word abide here because in some translations of the Bible, instead of remain, you see abide. You see, but if you abide in me and my words abide in you, abide and remain are the same thing. Abide means to remain, to stay, and regardless of the word that you see, the, the sense is still the same, whether it's stay or remain or abide. So don't get confused by me using remain or uh, instead of abide uh, or switching them. I chose this version to show a different way because most Bibles that you will see may use abide. 
in there. But abiding and remaining is the same thing. And that brings up something that is important. Before you remain in Jesus, you must come in first. And you come in by giving your life to Jesus as we're going to be explaining. I'm going to go back just one time so you can see the relationship between us and Jesus and really have that in your mind before I continue. So Jesus wants us to be fruitful and produce a lot of grapefruit, produce a lot of fruit in our lives like this tree is doing. But for this tree to do that, it must have the branches stay attached or remain on the vine because the branches cannot absorb food on their own. They have to remain attached to the vine and the vine sends its sap and they use that sap, which is a, the equivalent of life, to live and, and exist. If a branch is cut off, it's going to wither and die. And if a branch is not producing fruit, the, the father is the gardener, he's going to cut it off. But the ones that are producing fruit, he will prune it so that they can produce even more fruit. Okay, now, so let's look at a few more things. So our key passage is John 15, 17. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Notice here that I'm using another version of the Bible that is actually using abide instead of remain. But it's the same thing like I said earlier. You can say, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you and it will work just fine. So this passage gives two conditions for prayer. And one condition is that if you abide in me, and we said, if you abide in me, means if you remain in me and my words remain in you or my words abide in you. So the second condition is my words abide in you. And we're going to take a look at these separate conditions and see what they mean and how we can apply that to our lives practically. Like I mentioned earlier, there is a prerequisite to even getting to this point of learning how to remain in Christ. To remain in Christ, you must first already be in Christ. If you're not in Christ, you must come in and you do that by being born again. By being born again, Christ, Jesus Christ, must be your Savior and your Lord. Many times we like to talk about Jesus being our Savior, but we forget that we cannot separate Jesus's being our Savior from Him also being our Lord. Jesus cannot save someone until He's able to be that person's Lord. And Lord means you are a slave to Jesus. Now, what is the meaning of abiding in Christ? Let's take a look. The first meaning is that to abide in Christ means you have to absolutely surrender everything into God's hands. If we go back and just think over the image of that branch that stays attached or remain on the vine, that branch has absolutely surrendered to the vine. The vine must send it food before it can eat. When it produces leaves and buds and fruit, the fruit really belongs to the vine because it is the vine that absorbs the food from the ground and sends. If the vine does not send food to the branches, the branches cannot produce anything. The vine determines whether a branch is fruitful or not. If, a, if the vine does not send food to the branch, the branch will die. So the call of the Christian is a call to absolute surrender to God and to abide in Christ means you absolutely surrender and you are helpless without Christ. Like the branch is helpless without the vine. We as Christians must be absolutely surrendered to Jesus to the point where we are absolutely helpless without Jesus. So we, to do this, we need to give up our, our self-will and be broken and completely surrendered, like I said, the next thing it means is absolute dependence. 
This branch, when it is on the vine, is absolutely dependent on the vine for everything. It cannot produce fruit without the vine. It cannot bud, it cannot produce leaves, it cannot have food for its own sustenance or existence without the vine. It depends on the vine completely. We also have to depend on Jesus for our thoughts. We, only, we have to depend on Jesus for the words we speak and only speak what we hear Jesus speaking and do what we see Jesus doing. Even our feelings and our inclinations, our purposes must be the same purposes that we see Jesus having. We literally have to be a slave to Christ. And this is not something new. Jesus is not calling us to live in a way that he did not live. Jesus lived like that. Jesus lived like that with God. Jesus did not say anything unless what the Father was saying. He only also did what he saw the Father doing. This is what Jesus is calling us to by absolute dependence on him. We have to have no independent life of our own and really everything that we have needs to belong to, to Jesus, even our own selves. Just like the branches belong to the vine. The vine is the one that created the branches and the fruit that is on the branches is really the fruit of the vine. It belongs to the vine. The vine is the one that absorbs the food and produces the sap and scents. The vine even determines the year that the, the branch is going to bear the fruit because what fruit is is really excess nutrition. See, the way plants work is that a plant has to have enough energy from the ground, absorb enough nutrients just to live. If the plant has extra nutrients then that extra nutrients is converted into fruit that's why when you eat fruit you have energy from it because it is sweet and has sugars and that is extra energy that the plant is able to produce for a plant to produce fruit it must first meet its own needs and then have access to form a fruit now who determines whether the branches have excess nutrients to form fruit the vine and so it is with the life of a Christian. A Christian can only be fruitful when he has remained in Christ and received enough of Christ to the point where he now produces fruit. The fruit is an excess of what he receives from Jesus. The fruit is an outgrowth of the relationship of a Christian with Jesus. The next thing that we see is close communion. We see that the branch stays attached to the vine. It stays in close communication, close communion. And we as Christians also need to stay in close communion with Jesus if we are to abide in him. And we stay in close communion by prayer. And spending time in God's word and spending time with, the, with him and communicating with Jesus through the Holy Spirit. We also get to a stage of deep restfulness. You see, the branch remains on the vine and does not worry. It does not have to go and work for its own food. It just stays attached. It just remains on there. The vine will determine when to send the food. And the vine always sends the food because the vine wants to see the branches produce fruit. And the vine wants to see the branches have enough. So how do you abide in Christ? Now that we've seen what it means to abide in Christ, how do you abide in Christ? Well, I want all of us to first know that none of us can by their own power abide in Christ. This is the work of the Holy Spirit, but we have our own part to play and we're going to discuss that too. So God expects that we abide in Jesus. God expects it and he accomplishes it. God accepts the work that he through the Holy Spirit does in us. 
in getting us to abide in Christ. And then he maintains that work and he blesses it. If a Christian wants to really have a blessed and abundant life that Jesus came to give us, that blessed and abundant life is found not in the prosperity gospel. It is found in abiding in Jesus, in abiding in Christ. Now, your method of helping abide in Christ is to abide in the Word. And what do I mean by abide in the Word? To abide in the Word means you study the Word diligently because Jesus himself said that the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. When you study the Word of God and meditate on it, and hide God's word in your heart. God's word, which is the sword of the spirit, is the very thing that the Holy Spirit is going to use to really transform you into the image of God. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, we see that we are commanded not only to be living sacrifices, but also to renew our minds. And we renew our minds by meditating on God's word and hiding God's word in our heart, memorizing it, meditating it, Day and night, like we see commanded in Psalms 1 and in the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. So we need to really, really know that a person cannot abide in Jesus apart from spending time in prayer, spending time in the word of God. You can't even have a good prayer life without spending time in the word of God. Besides that, we need to obey Jesus' commands as soon as we hear it. We need to obey Him completely. We need to obey Him cheerfully. And we need to obey Him quickly. Then, we need to pray without ceasing. Many of the great men and women of prayer over the centuries have been people that have spent time in the Word of God. A man like George Mueller used to read his Bible on his knees. He said he went through his Bible several times on his knees. By the time he died, he read his Bible over 100 times from cover to cover. And most of those times he read on his knees. And he will read his Bible until he starts meditating on the Word. When he starts meditating on the Word, that will lead him into prayer. And the beautiful thing about spending time in God's Word, abiding in the, in the Word of God... Like that is that when you meditate on it, prayers form. And when those prayers form, those prayers are according to the will of God. And they become Jesus' prayers. They become Jesus' same words that he's praying. And those words, when Jesus prays, it is guaranteed that they will be answered. So what is the result of abiding in Christ? We see that when we abide in Christ, our desires will not be ours, but they'll be Christ's desires. We'll see that our prayers will no longer be our prayers, human prayers, they'll be Christ's prayers because we dwell in His Word and abide in Him. So our desires will be, His desires will be our desires, His prayers will be our prayers, and we'll just have the same feelings that Jesus has. All our prayers will be answered like Jesus promised, and will be very fruitful. 